The principle of pulse oximetry is based on the differential absorption characteristics of oxygenated that is red and deoxygenated that is dark hemoglobin. Oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more infrared light allowing more red light to pass through whereas deoxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more red light allowing more infrared light to pass through. Each pulse oximeter probe contains two light emitting diodes which emit red and near infrared wavelengths through a cutaneous vascular bed. A photodetector on the other side measures the intensity of transmitted light at each wavelength from which the oxygen saturation is derived. This is based on data stored in the memory of the oximeter. Scatter, reflection and absorbance of light by other tissues and blood components could confound the values. This is solved by the pulsatile nature of arterial blood which will increase the path length thereby increasing the absorbance. Other tissues being static do not contribute to the reading. Pulse oximetry is used to monitor SpO2 values in disease states like apnea, bronchopulmonary dysplasia and cardiac diseases. It is used as a part of resuscitation as per NRP 2010 to check endotracheal tube placement, effectiveness of bag and mask ventilation and to monitor for hypoxia during suction and laryngoscopy. Now that we have understood the basic working mechanism of pulse oximeters, let us have a hands-on the essential requirements for using these monitors. The front panel has a display screen and multiple buttons to adjust the parameters, alarm limits and the setup. There is a slot for connecting the charger in some pulse oximeters. Few on the other hand have a direct slot for the AC power connection. Then the pulse oximeter should be switched on by pressing the on button at the front panel. This light indicates the connection of the charger. This light would blink in view if the battery is running on low charge. This is the alarm signal which would blink if the values displayed skew beyond the set limits. The alarm silence button can be used to mute the alarm noise. By pressing this button thrice within 3 seconds, the alarm can be muted. When an alarm condition occurs, the alarm button light flashes and the alarm message appears but no audible alarm would sound. Note the pulse rate. And this shows the oxygen saturation of hemoglobin. Both these panels show the limit set by the operator. This is the plethysmographic waveform which automatically scales to the perfusion level or strength of the signal being received at the monitoring site. The brightness and contrast of the display screen can be adjusted using these buttons. Setting alarm limits is an important aspect of monitoring. In neonates, we usually set the saturation between 85 to 95 percentage and pulse rate between 100 to 160 per minute. Limits can be set using these buttons or these knobs at the sides to choose the appropriate component and set as per the clinical need. The display style can be changed from the plethysmographic waveform to simple number format. The trend over 30 minutes up to 24 hours can be viewed in the form of waves or bar diagram. Trends can also be represented in the form of a table. The arterial pulse can be represented as bar graphs or simple waveforms. In adults, the nature of arterial pulse can easily be discerned which is usually anacrotic with a clear notch. When the pulse is presented as bar graphs, the rate at which the segments pulsate is equal to the pulse rate. The highest pulsating segment indicates the strength of the pulse and the number of pulsating segments also indicates perfusion at the sensor site. The more the segments, the stronger the perfusion. If the bar display is less than 50 percentage, it indicates poor quality signals. If the waves are not uniform, the values displayed are likely to be erroneous. 
A practical approach to the problem is to cross-check the heart rate of the baby with the displayed value. They should match within 10% of each other. The causes of non-uniform waves could be many as discussed further and they should be corrected before attributing any significance to the displayed values. There are different types of probes available. Disposable probes are available though expensive. Flex probes ensure good fixation and safety in neonates. Life of a flex probe is 6 months. Finger probes are sturdy and last for at least 1 to 2 years. Clip probes can be applied over a finger but difficult to be used in neonates. The display panel can be dismantled from the unit after charging the battery for ease of transportation in few models. We also have handy portable pulse oximeters that work on batteries and cells thus making them ideal for transport. Some pulse oximeters have rubber frames which provide sturdiness during tra transport. Whenever a probe is applied for the first time, it has to be cleaned with spirit swab. Then, it has to be secured in such a way that one end of the probe is on the dorsum and the other on the ventral aspect of the site of monitoring. Ensure secure fixation of the flex wrap around the site. Maintenance of a probe is as important as good fixation. Handle it gently and never pull the probe from the site of monitoring. Ensuring regular cleaning will check cross infection. The site of application ought to be changed often and before fixation ensure good perfusion with the aid of perfusion index if available. And when not in use, keep it wrapped and well protected from light, dust and mechanical damage. For neonates weighing 500 grams to 3 kilograms, the probe is placed on the anterolateral aspect of the foot. And for infants weighing more than 3 kilograms, it is placed on the palm, thumb, great toe or index finger. Complications could arise though pulse oximeter is a non-invasive device. Burns could occur resulting from electrical short circuiting. Limb ischemia if the probe is applied too tight particularly in an edematous limb and erroneous reading based management. Problems are definitely anticipated while working with any equipment. We should be able to fix them by analyzing the cause and finding solution. If there is a message coating ambient light, we must infer that there is excess light shining on the sensor and thus reallocate the sensor to a site more shielded from light or reduce the amount of light. If the baby who is monitored with these sensors is under phototherapy, the sensor has to be wrapped with an opaque cloth or carbon paper. If interference is detected, it means that the signal is too erratic to be processed due to proximity of other electrical equipment generating high frequency electromagnetic waves. Generally, no action is required as the readings do not change with the interference or they become dashes if the interference persists. Signal processing resumes when the interference ceases. In case of blank display or non-uniform waveforms, the causes could be many like low perfusion, motion, too much light, presence of BP cuff on the arm or just an error in probe fixation. The actual cause should actively be searched for and corrected accordingly. A message of low battery indicates to just 5 to 15 minutes of remaining battery power. Plug the oximeter into the AC power supply. To prevent permanent damage to the battery, recharge a discharged battery within 8 hours after a low battery message is displayed. There is serious trouble when the message displays sensor failure as the causes could be multiple ranging from wrong sensor, broken cable wire, inoperative LEDs, faulty detector to failed sensor. The way out is by replacing the sensor. When there is a system failure message, some internal component of the monitor has failed and the entire unit requires service. Disinfection is as important as careful handling. The probes should be cleaned with spirit swab before every new application. The front panel can be cleaned with soap and water. The unit does not need autoclaving or pressure sterilization. 
never use petroleum based products acetone or other abrasive liquids to clean to put the gist in a nutshell part of clinical assessment it works on the principle of differential wavelength absorption understanding the simple physics can minimize erroneous reports careful handling and disinfection are mandatory one should know this equipment well as saturation is the fifth vital sign appropriate use can prevent retinopathy of prematurity and chronic lung disease in newborn babies thank you for your patient listening